Howdy, and welcome back to the Texas Bucket List. You know, there are a massive amount of museums here in the Lone Star State, each of them dealing with their own topic, from history to people to places to some that'll make you scratch your head. But there is one museum in Gonzales that is quintessential to any lover of the Lone Star State, and it all centers around a cannon. <laughs> Gonzales, Texas, a town synonymous with Texas history. Originally the capital of DeWitt's colony, the stories surrounding this legendary Lone Star State location can be found as far back as 1825. But the story every Texan knows by heart involves a cannon and a slogan we proudly wear on our sleeves, come and take it. I always liked Texas history and so then of course to be right in the Lexington of Texas in Gonzales is right down my alley. The director of the Gonzales Memorial Museum has one of the coolest job descriptions you can imagine. Hi, I'm Gary and I'm the guardian of the Come and Take It Cannon. Gary Shurig was born in Gonzales, so being a defender of all things Texian comes naturally to this native. He proudly tells the story behind the cannon that helped create a country. It's a small museum, so you kind of limited in what you can have in here, but you have a you have a gold mine. <laughs> the story behind the cannon starts in 1831 with a request to the Mexican government from Green to Wit. A cannon was provided for protection against hostile Indian tribes with the stipulation it was to be returned to authorities upon request. Now the cannon was more of a visual deterrent since it was rigged not to fire, but it didn't take long to fix that. Right here is where they had driven the, the nail in the touch hole so that it wouldn't shoot. Sure. And fortunate enough that the blacksmiths was able to repair this area here, so they were able to put some bushings in there to close up that hole and then turn it a few degrees and drill another hole in the top. By doing that, then they're able to make a cannon that's fully functional. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So the Smithsonian saw that and said, 95% yeah. chance. Yeah, this because is there's it. there's no purpose for a cannon to have two separate holes, even if this one was 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 open. Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't function. Four years after receiving the cannon, the Mexican government sent their request to return the ordinance. In 1835, when there was a rumble of uh, Texas independence, a revolution, Santa Ana sent out word that he wanted all of his guns back into his possession. A rally for independence was happening. In September of 1835, 100 Mexican troops marched on the banks of the Guadalupe River to retrieve said cannon. They were greeted by a group of 18, and it was at that moment the Texas Revolution began. They said, if you really want this cannon, you can come and take it, and they fired it at them. Referred to as the Old 18, it was this small group that started the Battle of Gonzales. Six months later, the siege at the Alamo and the Goliad Massacre took their toll on Texas. But on April 21st, 1836, the Texas Revolution came to an end with the Battle of San Jacinto, and Texas was independent. Naturally, if you come here, you need to go to Goliad, you need to go to San Antonio, to the Alamo, and then you need to go to San Jacinto. So this is just, this is the beginning. And if you don't have that, it's just like reading a book and starting in the middle of the book. You don't know how it got started or how they got there. To see the actual cannon that had a role in one of the most storied stories of the Lone Star State truly gives you chills especially when you consider how it was rediscovered. After the Battle of Gonzales, the cannon was on its way to San Antonio to help defend the Alamo. The cart carrying it busted near Sandy's Creek, about 20 miles from town, so it was buried. That cannon will stay buried from 1835 until July of 1936 when we have a flood, and it will unearth it. If it hadn't have been for that flood, it would have probably still been buried. And who knows, but I think it's just some reason why it, it got unearthed. Eventually, the cannon found its way back home to Gonzales, where it now sits just a few miles from the spot that the battle for Texas's independence started. Being able to see this cannon in person is truly awe-inspiring and brings you even closer to the roots of our great state, making it well worth a stop 
on the Texas bucket list. You have one heck of a centerpiece. I think it's just a part of history that's not complete unless you do come here just to know that that, that is where it started at. It's one of those situations where you just really don't, you can't put words to it. I don't want to live anywhere else but Texas. Thank you.